Here, they're about to push a high sprocketed machine from an old set of tracks onto a new set. With both tracks removed, the machine is free to roll. On a slight grade, it may just take off. If they'd had an operator in the machine, he could have stopped it by dropping the ripper or blade. Now, they should have planned proper blocking and restraint, but better still, they should change one track at a time. Then there can't be a roll away. Have we got going here, huh? Hurry and failure to heed safety warnings can also endanger those doing routine maintenance. Despite constant warnings about hot oil and pressure systems, some optimist always thinks he can get his hand away in time. Somebody help me. Needn't have happened. The temperature gauges, pressure gauges, and the safety caps on cooling systems are there to prevent accidents from occurring. The people who shake hands with danger are those who don't learn beforehand what they're getting into. Like the owner whose brake rotor chamber has been losing air pressure. Hey, Sam! I got the brake chamber off the loader. I gotta run into the dealers to get some repair parts. While I'm gone, will you take it apart to save us some time? Okay, Bill. At this point, the service manuals call for the insertion of a threaded tool to hold the spring force. Sam hasn't read the manual. He doesn't know he's releasing a force that might be as high as 1,750 pounds. Whether you're working on anything from nitrogen accumulators to inflated tires, it pays to know the kind of power you're dealing with beforehand. The warnings about gasoline are as old as use of the fuel. Yet somewhere, somebody is always deciding it won't hurt to use it as a cleaning fluid just this one time. Oh, he'll empty the pan very carefully, just as soon as he finds a rag to wipe off the carburetor. Meanwhile, the fuel keeps vaporizing. Hey, I've only got about another hour to go on this thing. I gotta get that thing washed over there. I'll be done in a minute. It's possible to become overconfident about handling dangerous materials. A good reason why safety instructions should be repeated at frequent intervals. Oddly enough, it isn't lack of familiarity with a job that causes most accidents. Often it's the routineness of the work that makes a person overconfident. Now, Bill Myers is changing buckets, a job he's done at least a hundred times. If he were new at it, Bill would be watching and thinking about every step. Now it's so routine that caution has been dulled. The hole is dry. The pin won't slide in. There's no stick or swab in the grease can, but he could surely find one if he took the time to search around. This is the moment, that split second when a man decides between being safe or shaking hands with danger. Couldn't find a stick or a swab, Bill could have had the linking members moved apart 
and greased them separately. It would have been a nuisance, but Bill Myers would give anything to be able to go back and do it the right way. Hey, Ernie. Yeah. I got this hose off of the dozer blade here. Why don't you put this bolt in that end of it? I'm going to take this into the shop. All right. I'll get it done. <laughs> should have blocked both push arms, and he should never have relied upon anything as unstable or crushable as building blocks. Improper blocking and failure to block are major causes of crushing accidents. Hey. We're dealing with enormous weight, and we should never depend upon hydraulics alone to hold it up. Back here. Ted, the position this truck bed was in without these locking pins in and you working underneath the truck bed and it had failed, you'd have had it. So these pins should be in place as such. Now it's always important to look out for the other guy. Safety is always in the hands of people on the job. The warnings and cautions are there for those who heed them. Safety procedures are spelled out and illustrated in lubrication and maintenance guides, operator's guides, and service manuals. The protection is there in machine design and safety devices. Safety instruction, emphasizing knowledge and awareness, prevents accidents by encouraging safety consciousness. And protective clothing helps shield the body from the unexpected. The human element remains. It can lend itself to safety or turn a routine situation into a dangerous one. Truck's gotta come through here. I want this out of here right now. And we all know that the service man doesn't always work under ideal conditions. Mechanic Bob Murray is an excavator with a dead engine. It won't start, which means the brakes are locked, which means it's going to sit right here until Bob disconnects the final drives. Then he'll have a machine he can move. What he should also have, but doesn't, is a second vehicle to provide braking. Shake hands with danger, hurry up and get it done. It takes two men to move this thing, but I'll make do with one. Bob isn't dumb. He wouldn't try towing it all the way to the shop without help. But he just wants to drag it a hundred yards or so and get that foreman off his back.
Murray will never again tow a freewheeling machine without having control over the braking. Now, Bob was lucky. Others were not. Shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger and friends I used to know. Compared to them, I'm lucky to be just Three Finger Joe. <laughs>